Hello everyone, it's Jaren with NCSI. I'm back talking about a couple of different things today. Uh, first we're going to cover the Web Console 2.0 here in EPM. This new feature was available starting in EPM 2021.1 Service Update 1. It is also included in EPM 2022 and also Service Update 2 for 2021 as well. Pretty simple. All we're going to do is open up a web browser. And the URL that we're going to go to is the course server name forward slash web console. Now I want to show you this is going to, prov it's going to provide an error. Um, if you run into this, the problem is you need to use the fully qualified domain name of your course server. So I'm going to get rid of that. Fully qualify this. And then type in that web console URL. And there we go. This is the new web console. Keep in mind, this is a, still an early release um, kind of deal here. It is not full featured. Um, we have exactly two features, <laughs> uh, remote control and software installations. The first thing you'll notice is it doesn't display anything by default. You have to type something here into the search in order to get that. Lab is the name of my domain, so it pulls up all this stuff with like users you can click on and see details about uh, where that user was found and whatnot. But the thing I want to show you today is an agent. So here's the agent. We've got some general information about it. This is my domain controller here. I can see additional details and look like applications, bio settings, network, operating system, and system information. So just some limited inf inventory information, not a full inventory, and that's okay. In the top right corner, we have our abilities. So our available actions are remote control and install software. So let's start there. All right, remote control inside of this window. This should look very familiar to you if you've been using the remote control web sockets. Um, starting in uh, 2022, that is the only option. And I believe SU2 in 2021.1, they've removed all the other legacy options. But this is it, remote control, all the standard features you'd come to expect, everything works and uh, looks pretty good in my opinion. All of our regular buttons are here for remote control, you know, file transfer, remote execute, control alt delete, windows key, etc, etc. All right, so that's the first capability that we have here in the new web console 2.0. The second one we have is software installation. This is what's known as a one-to-one -one software install. We are not going to be able to push lots of packages to lots of different machines. This is you drill down into a machine and choose what to install. I'm going to choose all packages here and then find the package that I want to deploy. Uh, we're going to go with Notepad++, very useful free utility there. If I click on it, I just get the description. You know, nothing, nothing super fancy there. However, if I come all the way over to the right and click on this install link, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to install this package? Well, yes, I am. And there we go. Package operation successfully initiated. Now, if we go over to our console, I have some tasks here. If I refresh this, you'll notice there's a new task automatically generated and automatically started by the system. If we change over to my domain controller and look in the start menu, there it is, Notepad++, freshly installed and ready to go. So very quick and easy way to deploy software if somebody's on the phone, you know, maybe you have a, a, a person who needs help and uh, we just need to update a software, we need to install something, whatever. This is a very quick and easy way to get that done without having to go through a whole lot of steps. Okay, now we're going to talk about the new engine-based agent available in EPM 2022 only. I'm not sure if they're going to plan on adding it through service updates on the older versions or not, but for now, we only have it in EPM 2022. The first thing we need to do is add a registry key that allows us the options to use the EPM engine-based agent. What we need to do is go to computer, HK local machine, software, Avanti, management suite. 
and add this new D word, enable new agent, capital E, capital N, capital A, all one word, and that needs to have a value of one. Once that's done, if you go to your agent configurations and you right click on your agent configuration, you'll notice we have two new options, create manifest install files and create manifest install MSI. So I'm going to choose this install files here, putting it in a folder called EBA for engine based agent and I'll hit OK. That will begin building it in the background and holy crap it's done. So one big advantage right there already over the regular agent is building this took a second and a half. <laughs> Whereas if you if you have any experience building self-contained agents uh, using the old can't say old yet. The current methodology, it's, you know, a few minute process. This one is, is quite fast. So for now, the web page tells you to ignore this, this MSI here, uh, not to use it. So, you know, I definitely recommend staying away from that for the time being. However, let me show you one of the big advantages of this new deployment method. So if you're worried about security and you have application whitelisting, blacklisting style controls in your environment, this will help you, should make you very happy. Keep in mind, not every file is signed. The manifest here is not, nor is the, this is the core servers dot zero file. This is the um, certificate that the core server is uh, generates upon installation and our agents are programmed to trust using this. So that one is also not signed. The future, I believe they will have um, signed MSIs, a complete MSI that contains everything that will be signed. But for now, we're going to ignore this one. The other option I have here is create manifest install MSI. Let me just go ahead and put that in that same folder. And there it is, done. Took less than 10 seconds. I love it. One big difference, this one just generates this MSI file, whereas the EPM agent installer includes these other two. Uh, this third one is, like I said, not necessary at this moment, but it, it, it generates these three files. This is a standalone. The one downside to this, it is not signed. So just keep that in mind as you are building out these agents. Another option for installation is navigating to the LD logon share. And then down to the bottom, well, towards the bottom, we have this new exe, agent installer.exe. You can run it directly from the share and it will install whatever is marked as the default agent for that Windows or Windows Server OS. All right, we moved over to my lab client and now I'm going to demonstrate installation for you. Uh, the way I'm going to demonstrate is using the EPM installer.exe. And that is in our LD logon share. This is kind of like the wscfg32.exe. If you've ever used that, we call it whizconfig. It was a way to install the default agent, whatever it is for this OS, um, without having to have an installer. You know, if you're just sitting at a computer and realize, oh, heck, it's doesn't have the agent installed, you can go and install it that way. Well, we can install it this way as well. It does need to remain on the share in order for it to work. So I'm just going to right click, run as administrator. Here we see some stuff kicking off. And if we go and look at our folders, we should start seeing some folders show up. Take note, it is now Avanti with this new engine based agent. It is no longer in the Landesk folder. They're finally moving away from that. And now it's called EPM agent instead of LD client. So you'll notice there's not a lot, not a lot of stuff in here just yet. Um, this is kind of a streamed installer. It's just going to take a few minutes and, uh, and run its course here. So we'll take note of time. It's uh, 442. And then when it's done, I'll take note of time. You can see it's a uh, pretty rapid install. All right, here we are. It's now 4.45 and we are mostly done. Uh, I believe it's still running some inventory scans and whatnot. 
uh, but you can see here we have a lot more files and folders available. And if I click on my start menu, there's the folder that we're all used to seeing with the different icons. If I roll back over to my core server, you can see at about 447, we ran an inventory scan. Now you can tell this is an engine based agent by looking in the inventory, going to land desk management, and then right here, engine state. Here are the various engine based components and their status. Oh, look at that report date successfully installed two minutes later. So pretty cool. I like this. Uh, like I said, do not put this into production just yet. There are some things that are a little bit not ready for prime time, let's say. Uh, for example, installations using the MSI and the standalones uh, I've had a little bit of trouble with, limited success. You're welcome to try it on your own, see if you have any better success. For me, the 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 most reliable way to install has been that EPM agent installer.exe and it's also very fast so there's one other thing I would like to point out the SDM cache has now moved it is no longer in the program files x86 it's in program data then Avanti EPM agent SDM cache so that's a big shift from what we're used to that cache has moved Okay, uh, how do we uninstall? The normal installer will not work. We cannot uh, do that uninstall win client that I have here on the desktop. It will not uninstall it. The trick here is running this same file with a different switch. So here's a neat trick. If you hold down left shift and right click in the blank space, you can actually open a command window here. Oh, didn't catch it that time. Uh, this one's a PowerShell window here. Alternatively, I could copy this to my desktop and I'm just going to run EPM agent installer space forward slash force uninstall. And that will take off and go. And uh, same, same thing with the uninstallation. The speed is much higher than with the old uninstall when client.exe. Yep, you can see stuff already disappearing out of there. All right, well, I hope this has been insightful for you. This uh, new agent is very exciting to me and I'm happy to get the word out. Hopefully we'll see a not beta <laughs> full production version of this soon because I believe this is a wonderful step forward and uh, bringing our agent installs uh, right up into the future. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for learning with me today, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.